So let's start with this example three. So this example three is a case of rectangular footing. So we're going to calculate stress increase. So first we have this rectangular footing. Let's call this eight, eight feet side B. That's a smaller of the two dimension. We call this longer side the length side. So that's capital L. So we have this rectangular footing 250 kips. So that's basically 250,000 pounds. So that's the magnitude of the load. And then we're going to estimate the increase in vertical stress directly underneath the, under the center of the footing. So that point A is directly at the center of the footing, under the center of the footing. And the depth of Z is 20. And for this example, let's calculate this stress increase using both the point load solution and the rectangular solution we just talked about. So let's start with point load. And then we'll compare how good that point load solution, that approximation is for this example. So first we are going to use point load. For point load solution, we need that point load, that capital P. And this is given to us in the problem statement. So we know that column has that load 250 kips or 250,000 pounds. So that's the magnitude of the point load. Again, this is a force. The depth of the point Z is 20. Since it's directly under the center of that uh, rectangular footing, that horizontal distance or radial distance R is zero. So this gives us an R over Z ratio of zero. And for point load, we're going to use table 10.1 and we have this R over Z value of zero. So let's look at table 10.1. So for this I1, that influence factor I1 for point load, we know R over Z is zero. So then the corresponding I1 value, 0.4775. So that's the influence factor. And once we have I1, then the increase due to this point load uh, is capital P over Z square times I1, 250,000 pounds over 20 feet square times 0.4775. So that is the stress increase due to point load and that value is 298.4 pound per square foot. So that's if we use the point load solution to find a stress increase. For the second case, let's use the rectangular solution. For rectangular load, uh, we have, uh, this is directly under the center of the square footing. So that's case number three. So we're going to use, so we're going to use this solution here. So the first, the uh, dimension of this rectangular footing, capital B is eight feet eight feet and L is 12. So first let's calculate M1 and M1. And M1 is Z over small b and small b is half of the width. So that's 20 over four. And once we have these two values, then we can use table 10.11. So we have M value of 1.5 and N1 value of five. So N1 of five. And N1 value is 1.5. So that's in between one and two. So we are going to just use simple linear interpolation. So it's going to be in between these two values. This is for M1 of one and M1 of two. For N1 equals to five, M1 equals to one, I4, let's call this case A. In N1 of five, M1 of two, and this I4 value. And then the actual I4 value that corresponds to M1 of 1.5. And once you have this value, then that delta sigma z. So that delta sigma z is q times i4. 
and the Q is the surface pressure. And the surface pressure is the load over the area. And so we know the total load is 250,000 pounds and then the area of the footing, we have that as well. So this Q equals to that P over L times B. And this is 2604 PSF. And once you have the surface pressure, then that delta sigma Z is Q times I4, 264 PSF. So that is the stress increase using the rectangular load solution. And now let's look at the two values here. And you can tell for this case, the point load is not a very good approximation. And the reason being, the Z that the depth Z is 20, so it's fairly close to the surface. If you look at the dimension of the rectangular load, if you times the length by two, that's 24. So the depth Z of 20 feet is still pretty close to the surface. So that's why the point load solution in this case is not a very good solution. 